Welcome to the new year, 2020, January 7th. Mm -hmm. Waitley Elementary School School Committee meeting. Thank you, everyone. Um, minutes from last meeting. I make a motion to approve. All in favor? All right. Okay. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should just have that written down. <laughs> um, we are on TV. I know. We, we, no, we're trying to do right. Um, Shelley, would you like to? Sure. Um, so there are five uh, warrants presented for signature, totaling $29,071.19. Uh, the reports were provided electronically in advance. There's no major changes to report or concerns at this time. Um, Bob and I did just talk about uh, one of the accounts that is in a negative status, and it's from summer programs in our special ed department, and we will be working to move funds around to cover that. It was just an overage in salaries. What was the amount on that? Uh, Roughly. Like, was Four or five hundred dollars, I yeah, think I saw. Yeah. I guess I was just looking for it. Is that the practice to always just move money in the budget to cover it? 816 bucks. For next year's budget, we oh. tried to make sure that there were funds to Enough cover that. Oh. So. There's not always the right um, item, right? So you have to put it, make, create an item. To, um. Well, so I think what happens historically, my understanding with summer programs, is it's something that's hard to estimate what the true wages are going to be, and that <coughs> is typically a line that does go over. So funds will just get transferred from another line that has additional money available at the end we've, of the year. we've had a lot of changes in our summer programs so we don't have a whole summer program budget ready mm -hmm. the programs aren't ready by the time we're making budget so you know we've been adding you know different the different camps and that kind of stuff and sometimes you know we're looking for supporting different students in those camps and that kind of thing so and we don't know we really don't know how many students we're going to have until the program starts right or Correct. And then if students have additional needs and we got to support them there. And that was, for us, that was the, the big one last year at this time. We did not have the IEP that um, represented some of the, the spending that we did during the summer. What summer programs do we have here? In we do this? Science, science camp. camp. That's it? That Just was the one? here, but the, our kids go to Deerfield for reading camp. And do we pay for that? Or is yes. that a part of our budget? Or is the budget just related to that one program? <coughs> no, 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 that's for all of the, the summer things. Yeah. All the summer things. So um, in terms of the reading camp, they take the cost of you know the, the staff and materials, and then they look at how many kids, and they divide oh, it by and they that. allocate it by town? Um, yeah, so we pay our, our portion based on how many kids. How many so kids it's, not a, it's not like a... 25 percent split right okay which, which is know. good so that if you don't have a whole lot of kids that right they didn't have going that's good yeah i like the summer camp yeah. you know, some of them are too there's tuitions and mm -hmm. sliding scales and i remember this day when i was a little kid going to summer camps a couple times it was always fun and lots of activities because it changed a lot since yes no <laughs> Um, I had a question about the encumbrances that are I saw on the one column. What there were in in categories that I didn't quite understand. So I was just wondering if you could give a general um, explanation of what the encumbrances are. Again. Um, so if we know that an expense, take the copier lease for example, yeah. we're going to have a flat bill every single month that we know what that amount is. We'll yeah. encumber the full amount for the year so that. The funds are reserved okay. so that we can pay that bill. Okay. So those are like contracts and things that we know we have to um, pay. They're not always. It could also be that we put in purchase orders, but we haven't paid for it yet because it sits in the encumbrance line until it's mm -hmm. paid, okay. and then once it's paid, it moves to actual spent. Okay. Um, so the money left in that line is essentially like leftover money that's available for other expenses. Yeah, or it just hasn't been been used yet. purchased yet. Yeah. 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 I was just trying to think about how do you try to think about that. Does that help? Mm -hmm. Okay. But we don't do that with salaries for some reason. So the elementary schools, because the salaries are paid from the towns, um, we just record them with each payroll. We don't book the entire system in the database, so it only goes in as transactions occur. Versus Frontier, 
because Frontier is in the actual database because we pay directly from the school, mm -hmm. the system automatically populates for the whole year. So that's actually something that I'd like to look at changing because it would help us know yeah, <laughs> where that's we're the at chunk of closer the to it earlier mm -hmm. in the process. Yeah. Um, but right now the module isn't set up for that. So we can't even look at, like I can't even look up an employee's hire date in our database right uh -huh. now. You have to look in a paper personnel file because the database doesn't support that system. So uh, that'll be something in the future that I'm looking mm -hmm. at and we'll have to see what the additional cost would be. But right. it's definitely a challenge, I think, especially when it comes to the numbers because it looks like there's a well, huge amount of money, money available yeah. and it's, we know it's We not. know most of it's going to um, be right. So okay. it would be nice to see it done where that those funds are encumbered up yeah. front. Yeah. That's helpful. Right, and remember the, the time of the divisions, we unrolled it last year with TMS at the same time, giving principals control to go in at the same time that we had TMS. It was a lot of, we had, you know, we had a choppy year with it. Mm -hmm. So we haven't had the system for a, a long time, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, you know, yeah. someone who really can use the system. And, right, you know, it sounds like that was right. the best explanation I've ever gotten. Right, but I'm just, <laughs> just kind of saying, like, you're like, what kind of software? You don't really, this, I'm just trying to explain there's a history yeah. of why, it's only, the is only two years old for us and the way we're using it, mm -hmm. and so, so you're, is you're it seeing when you, you see our budget, how the budget process done, you can see the next level of how she's using it. Well, yeah. I mean, using Excel within it, but and okay. now it's all in yeah. yeah, I think we can. It's just gonna. It costs it more money, yeah. and it takes time to input all of those records. But I do think it's something we will want to look at for the future. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. I was just I was questions? just looking at the sub um, sub general uh, salaries, and it looks like we. Spent a lot on subs already this year. You know, we have sixteen thousand two hundred put aside for that, and we've already spent twelve thousand six hundred with only twenty-two percent left. Do you see more subs lately than? I need to look at that because okay. that doesn't that doesn't okay. fit with. There should be twelve thousand six hundred remaining to be spent. Oh, for sorry, subs. I'm looking no, at the okay. other way. Sorry. No, nope. <laughs> it's early. Yeah. So if you look in the yeah. column that says YTD, that's what we've actually spent to date okay. is thirty five hundred. Okay. And then Sorry. there's twelve six remaining. I'm looking at it the other way. Yeah. I was gonna say because we do pretty well. Yeah. We do pretty well with subs. That's what we do. We use internal people. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. That reminds me. We didn't discuss. We didn't discuss oh, no, this. So I was just trying to put it down. Sorry. But I got some maternity leaves coming up, so. Okay. <laughs> not, not my Not my <laughs> Put that out there. For the next school year? Um, no, for, for this. So it's just not in terms of next year's budget, but I had some planning to see if it would be in. And look at how that's going to how that's gonna impact that subline. But it will reduce your salary line, so it typically offsets because they don't get 100% paid maternity leave for the entire time they're out. But we can talk about it and look at it more closely. But typically, it works out that because the teacher salary is reduced, there's money to pay the sub in there, mm -hmm. unless they're going out like the last 60 days of school. It's which, if that's the case, they're both then, in April. So yeah, we can look at it. Closely. Both. Two. Yes. Wow. Okay. Um, so we'll move on to new business since there's no public comment or unfinished. Yankee Candle gave us a nice donation. Nice. Yes. We appreciate. <clears throat> so I am um, at the last meeting Chrissy presented that Yankee Candle has given the, um, the elementary school um, $4,000. Um, this is a new practice of theirs. They're increasing their mm -hmm. gifts. In the past, they've given up to $20,000 in scholarships to Frontier graduates. Mm -hmm. And so every year that the annual, it's an annual giving, um, they give to the police and the fire departments of Waverly and Deerfield. And this year, they also gave to elementary schools. Mm -hmm. And so it is in our, um, it's in our policy to accept donations, private donations. Um, we're probably going to adjust that policy because it's kind of like it says all donations. So if someone gives $25, technically I bring it forth. But we, I've kind of looked at it as larger donations that are impacting. So um, we need your approval to accept that so donation. So the board has to accept it? So you <coughs> right. The board, yes. Okay. Well, the committee has to oh, accept the committee, it. Sir. The committee has to accept it. And I guess the, uh, 
the idea behind that kind of policy is that if you, we were getting donations from nefarious groups yes. with alternate motives, there has to be a kind of a checks and balances mm -hmm. of that. And so I guess um, there is no ulterior motive here other than being good community members. Mm -hmm. And um, That's great. Um, do we have plans for the donation, or do <coughs> we do? Yeah. Well, um, when we went to the ceremony, and I, I wrote about that in my report, um, they kind of wanted us to be able to speak to what we were planning to spend it on. So mm -hmm. it's not set in stone, but um, we have purchased a lot of robotics equipment for, like, it's more suitable for, like, maybe into second grade and up. Mm -hmm. um, and I was speaking to Maureen Belcha, our tech person, and she had suggested getting something along that line, coding and robotics, that is suitable for our youngest oh, folks. That's cool. That's Bob. Okay. Oh. Um, <laughs> so I have Paula looking into that. Now. Oh, great. Um, and there's some interesting things out there that, that are sort of a precursor to coding and robotics, but not necessarily right. in front of the screen. Yeah. And there's some hands-on stuff. That's that's great. Great. So that's what we were hoping to spend the money on. Cool. It's very difficult to spend money when, like, when someone says, Something nice thing to money. money. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which one of the things on my wish list would yeah. I, I like to, to spend it on? But the older kids are so excited about the robotics that I figured yeah. we, we need to natural. We need to do something for the little guys, too. And who runs the robotics in the school here? Um, Paula will do it with her, with her uh, tech classes, but also um, I bought a set. I didn't buy you all, bought a, a set. Um, that is, it's it's a classroom set. There are so there are <coughs> eleven of these units, um, and so they can go to any classroom. They're on a cart, and each robot has a an iPad that goes with it. So there's enough so that um, two kids in a in a classroom can work together, oh, and wow. the whole class can use it. We should do like at the end of one of our demo. meetings, visit a class that's using it. Yeah. Oh, you were here when they I were. I was here when I saw it. It was kind of just. It was neat to see. Yeah. It's not just like, they're not just toys, it's like they're trying to figure out and problem solve and, and mm -hmm. relate to here to make a three-dimensional object move in, in a three-dimensional world. And it was just, there's a lot more, I think we should do a, we should do a little fun show visit. Show. Something like, I will come to, they come show Not to show. put you on the spot like that, but I, that's a good wish. You gotta show I'll do it to Lacey, Lacey again, because that was yeah, like, yeah, that's good. Darius was here and I'm like, let's go down to fifth grade. And I'm sure Lacey was like, oh. Fantastic. <laughs> um, but the kids had done, they had gone to a, um, some professional development around these, these specific robots. They're called Dash and Dot. Um, and they had seen this activity where it was around Halloween, so the kids had to design different spots on the trick or treat path. And then they had to, they had to program their robot, robot to go to door to door. Mm -hmm. um, and so they had sort of modified it for the holidays and had them going to different, you know, they went to a gingerbread house and they mm -hmm. went to, you know, Candyland. <laughs> yeah, all kinds of places like that. And then there was a, if they completed that task, there was a, there was a reward mm -hmm. um, at, awesome. at each station. And the kids were really excited about it. And it was, it was very cool to see. And especially, you know, they, they would call me over and say, we're all set, we think we got it this time. And then they would run through the sequence and there would be a spot where it didn't work. And watching them problem solve that place where it didn't work was, was pretty cool. Yeah, I'd be to see. Let's do that. Okay, so we need a motion to accept the donation. So moved. A second. All in favor? Thank you very much, Yankee Candle. Maybe we should um, also, when the kids are playing with this stuff, maybe take a picture and send a, a group picture. Well, I wanted to get the... Um, the things that we're specifically going to buy with right. this with the little guys, I wanted to get that stuff in here, get a picture, mm -hmm. and then have the little guys send a, yeah. a thank, thank you. Yeah, good idea. Right. I already did a formal thank you yeah. to the from, yeah. from all of us. And it came with, they, I was joking with someone that day, I said, oh, I hope they give us one of those big checks like on Publishers Clearinghouse, and they did. <laughs> and they, it was a, it was one of those great oh big gosh. phone core <laughs> checks. That's nice. <laughs> On the website. It was very exciting. Yeah, that would be cool on the website. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next to the picture of the kids with the robot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Budget. Here we okay. go. So I have some handouts, one of each, for each of you. So I know that this looks a little bit 
a lot different than what you're used to seeing in the past, so I'm happy to take feedback on what you'd like to see for the next meeting. Um, I will try to make this summary page bigger next time. I don't know why I printed so small, but it is microscopic. This one. And yes, <laughs> and it's a lot of raw data. It's more data than you're probably used to seeing, and some of it we're not gonna talk about because the change is so minor that it's not really worth discussing. Um, but generally, I, first I want to say that right now we're looking at, because I know that this is the big drum roll question, a 2.89% <laughs> increase um, where we have things right now as they stand. Um, and then I'll go in through and highlight some of the major changes that, come, that make up that number. What, just a quick one, what could, what could change it lower or higher? Uh, We'll say before our next meeting, what could what could change it that we don't know? Patience, young Skywalker. Let her go through it. Okay, I'm just we'll, no, no, because oh, no. she's going to go through okay, it. And it's some of the different <laughs> fundings, and we're going to wait on that. But if we go to the end of how you change it before we talk about what these issues are, <laughs> keep it in there. It's okay. It's exciting. Uh, Bob, I'm, I can only I saw the 249 hours later. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's, a good, it's at a good spot. And, and yeah, it's a good start. It was, and she'll explain. Okay. Let her explain Which why we it's. We were hoping we would. Right. Yeah. Yeah, um, so you'll see on here as we walk through it that the majority of the change is from salary and wage increases, which is pretty typical. Um, we did reduce down some expenses, and that was partially based on looking at the prior three fiscal years' actuals to see where things could be realigned more properly. Um, and then we took into consideration the needs and wants of the principal and any department heads that were involved in the budgeting process. Um, one of the bigger things that is a positive for the budget, but not necessarily a positive for the school, is that the percentage of central office shared expenses are down, and that's down because enrollment is down compared to last October. So while it's good budgetarily, it's not good to see your enrollment numbers dropping. Um, but that does help bring your salaries down naturally because anything that's shared either four ways between just the elementary schools or five ways if there's a split with Frontier, um, Waitley's percentage is going to drop for the next fiscal year. Um, Can I ask a question? Yes, that? are we um, smaller part of a smaller pie, or are we smaller part of a bigger pie? Like, are the other schools growing, or are the other schools actually um, shrinking? That's a good question, and I think it depends on the school. I think there is one other school. I think Conway's also down, but I think Deerfield and Sunderland might be up a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I'm not going to go line by line through here, but I am going to highlight some of the bigger changes. So uh, one of the first changes that I want to point out that's not really a budgetary change, but you will see on function code 1450, administrative technology, there's a 5,500 decrease here. But if you look down at code um, 4,400, you'll see it's almost an addition of the exact same amount. Desi's no longer using that function code 1450 for salary, so it's really just swapping it out. So there's not a huge change in the budget, but it appears that there is, so I just wanted to make sure that you understand that. Um, the curriculum in the 2210, that decrease there is just because of the shared percentage cost, all of the salaries that are under there, that's being dropped down. Uh, in the principal's office for 2210, that is salary increases, and then Chrissy wanted to bring up some of her lines there for supplies and materials as an ongoing increase year to year so that she could have additional funding for professional development or supplies and materials in her office. Uh, 2305, the teacher salaries, that's one of our largest increases, so that accounts for um, a adjustment hopefully for wherever we land with contract settlement obviously we're not there yet um, but we do have a number built in there we also have one teacher who's having a column change from a master's to a master's plus 15 so that will add an increase uh, to her salary and then you have uh, two teachers who are going from step 13 to 14 next year which is one of the largest jumps in the salary schedule so um, that has a big impact on your wages for the teachers. Mm -hmm. Under instructional aids, that is also another large increase here. Again, that accounts for the wage increase and that is based on their actual contract since they are settled. Um, and then we had an EC teacher in FY20 who was funded. Um, she moved with a child up to kindergarten, so when the FY20 budget was built, she was actually placed in the wrong funding source, and we've had to adjust that for this year. Didn't create any issues for the FY20 budget, but moving into FY21, we just have to get her back into the correct spot. 
Um, and Which we'll, one is that? Uh, 2330 instructional aids. Mm -hmm. Um, we may be able to split this funding depending on where school choice numbers come in so that we can gradually add her back into the budget and split her salary part general fund and part um, school choice which would help bring your percentage down but we didn't want to pop that in here yet because we don't have the school choice numbers so that that pause is going back to what Bob asked right. so that 2.8 could come down slightly if we have a good school choice <clears throat> Projecting why we believe we're going to have a good school choice, but before we go ahead and do that, as we know this with the number of games, you never can start low and go higher. Um, so we want to see, and on the 27th is when the cherry sheets come out from the, uh, the state, um, right, 27th, 28th, somewhere in that range. And so we'll have an idea of the exact numbers of what they're projecting us to receive in school choice, and then chapter 70 funding you know, goes to the town. So this, these numbers relate just to the general fund budget, not, doesn't include the school choice budget? No, um, but this sheet that you have has all of the other funding sources on it, so you'll be able to see what we're looking at for the other funding sources. Um, line 2354 is a $3,000 increase to the general fund. This is um, mentor stipends and grade leader stipends, and this was previously funded from the REAP grant, and the curriculum department and the principal are requesting that those be put on local funds. We, won't, we don't know necessarily what we're going to get for REAP funding, and there's other um, things that would like to be used for that with those funds, so we're looking to put that back onto the general fund. Uh, 2440 under other instructional services this is where we've increased the summer sped salaries so that we can make sure that we have the right salaries allocated uh, there was a request by Chrissy to increase funds for the garden program and then um, Karen Parandino our sped director has asked for additional funding in the contract service line which also falls under here um, that's for anything that we have a consultant come in for that's special needs related. That has nothing to do with the summer program, correct? No. Okay. Um, so 2353 and 20, I'm sorry, 2453 and 2455, uh, Waitley's funding was a little bit low in those two lines. It's not a major increase to the budget, but the IT director wanted to bring those lines up so that they're comparable with other schools in the district that have. Um, $20,000 in those lines roughly. We, Waitley had about 17 or 18,000, so we're just looking to bump that back up. What is the replacement cycle for the computers? Is that what gets purchased out of there? Yeah. yeah. Scott's mm -hmm. pretty good about that. If you look around the library, it looks a little different now than it did yeah. last time you were yeah. here. Because yeah. we had the, All the best time. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that was where a, a big chunk of the money went. And uh, at the I don't remember if it was the end of last year or the beginning of this year, we got another uh, Chromebook cart. Mm -hmm. Because one generation of the Chromebooks were ready to yeah. retire. Yeah, it's just that for budgeting, we need to plan for how much money is in there to keep replacing them. I think so that's why, why Scott has requested that particular to keep um, amount of money because he's got sort of the, the right. bird's eye view of, of all of that kind of stuff. And okay. he sort of keeps those plates spinning up. I think they're on, I think they're on, I think they're on top of that. As far as I know, from years past, they've been on top of well, the they, replacement. When the it's also comes. for those in the following the tech world. This the used to be able to schools used to be able to string mm -hmm. computers along, yeah. and so you say, oh, we, every five years, and then budgets were tight. We make it seven, eight, and you'd have these old clunkers at work. But now the the computer companies have gotten savvy to that and they stop operating. Mm -hmm. So you have these Chromebooks that work great, but after five years, they no longer will allow them to load new materials yeah. and that kind of stuff. So they've kind of, I don't, they, I don't know what's the word to use. It's handicapped. Yeah, yeah, and so you can no longer, you know, make some devices work longer than they're, you may be able to use them in some, some, in some ways, but not in the same, not have how they were intended right. to use. So, so we really we're now really for forced. Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Engineered obsolescence. It would be helpful at some point, maybe Scott come and talk about how he thinks about that. that. You know, like what is the process and replacement? Because the other thing is that Waitley, I guess I'm curious why Waitley needs to be the same level of the other schools if we have less it's students. Ours is, is, is closely is matched to the other school that is Conway. with Conway. You, know, yeah. you guys have your yeah. enrollments within five students. Yeah. And so. Um, so it's more on a per student basis. Right. So Scott would have allocated more or requested more for Sunderland and, and Deerfield. Right. 
And it's not just the students, also we yeah, also the staff. Staff, staff right. here to turn over there. Yeah. So I will I will ask Scott if he will attend. I'm going to the next meeting. Yeah. So he can make it. Yeah, but I mean it's part of the part of the budget to hear. It it's probably one of the greater it's gonna um, be an line item changes. Forward. So yeah, yeah. And getting an understanding because if you also go back in time, you know, 10, 15 years ago, most computer purchases were purchased with excess funds or school choice. One time purchases. Right, one time yeah. purchases. And now I mean Technology, as you're hearing, is everyday, you know, curriculum, so yeah. to speak. And so, you get if you eventually pulling into your budget. You have that back and forth, but it, yeah, it makes yeah. more. Especially now that the the computers are becoming obsolete, that becomes a bad year for the town in the sense of trying to go for capital funds, and then, mm -hmm. and then you know, all of a sudden you don't have. So it needs materials. to be in the operating so, budget. Yeah. And so on, it's good. on the other yeah. hand, there are things that we don't spend as much money on as as we once would have, like textbooks and things like that, because. Right, that's good to know. If these are replacing some expenses. Right, it's not it's just not adding. Great. Good morning. <laughs> um, so the next three lines I want to highlight are 2720, 2800, and 3200. So those are primarily salary increases there for any uh, guidance staff or psychology staff, uh, nursing staff. Um, in the 2720 testing and supplies, we have added funds for testing materials. Uh, we did have, we had to create a new line item this year and we're able to move funds from another line that was uh, likely over budgeted so that we could add this in because we realized it was an oversight. So um, we need to maintain that line moving forward. The transportation. I don't know why 1400 of the SPED transportation was put on general fund versus school choice where the rest <coughs> of the funds were paid from for FY20. So we just moved all of that to make the accounting of it a little bit easier. So that was able to bring down the general fund line there. Uh, and Karen has reviewed any of the special ed related expenditures and made comments where needed so that we could change or increase or decrease as needed. So we feel like the transportation lines will be in good shape. Uh, 3,600 for school security, that is a new line item that we're adding in since we're going to be having the new door fob system put in place. Mm -hmm. uh, there tends to always be some kind of maintenance that comes up even with brand new systems. So we're putting in a line there for $1,500 for maintenance needs. Is the actual system like a capital expense or? Uh, it was funded it with a grant. This year, and I don't, they're not done. They're not done the work yet. There were a whole lot of people here yesterday, like looking at things. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's in progress, but there, it was fully funded by a grant for Wheatley, I believe. Through the state yeah. or federal government or whatever it's going to be. Uh, 4110 under the custodial line, there was an expenditure line here that hadn't been used in a few years, so this is not technically a decrease. I've just reallocated it to different facilities line items. It was kind of money that was just sitting there waiting to be moved around, and so we decided just to uh, get it in the proper spots. Uh, utilities, uh, I adjusted the phone based on the actual. Not sure why it was so inflated for FY20, but it didn't appear that our phone bill was as high as the budget was calling for, so reduced that down. Uh, maintenance of grounds, we added $1,500 there to cover the annual replenishment of wood chips on the playground. Uh, maintenance of buildings, so this is a question that I have for you. There is a line item under this category titled Central Office Repairs. And I was hoping that your historical knowledge uh, would help me understand what this line was used for. I did reduce this line because it hasn't been used fully in several years. Darius was thinking perhaps it was related to when the building was separate and everyone wasn't at Frontier uh, and that the line has been maintained mm -hmm. over the years. Um, but I did drop it down a little bit because it seemed unnecessary to have as much money there as we needed when we're trying to bring the percentage of increase down a little bit. My, my guess was when there was the blue building that there was all these, all these projects yeah, and ongoing expenses. Did did, did Waitley create? And that's where I was saying with looking at you folks for the history. Did Waitley create a line item for that building repair just so that to work, keep it organized within what it had to give to? Central office outside of the central office. Can we look at old bills that were? Yeah, we can. We can go we back. Can this was, we were talking about this yesterday, and I said, "Oh, let's just ask the committee. Maybe, maybe yeah. like, oh, we did this, and so." So this is in addition to any other charge that we would get from the central office. 
it's outside of the it's a separate yeah. line separate assessment. so it wasn't like utilities or phone or any of that kind of thing it's a separate line that's specifically labeled maintenance. maintenance and no other school has it no so we're the only school that has yeah it. yeah so How about if we just take it right out well <laughs> You never like to do that thing next year. Well, um, without knowing what it was used for, I think. It's and I can, I can. I mean, I would look at see what what was charged to it or whatever. Um, I certainly don't think we want to drop it down completely. Perhaps reallocating it to other line items would be helpful. But how much money is it after this? Be, how much money is it um, after subtracting it? Still Wow. Ten thousand we could use somewhere else, else probably or well so in after I hire an interior decorator to redo his office. Good morning, Lady Elementary School students. Okay. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> Darius, always, his wife and kids do all that. <laughs> Today is Tuesday, January seventh. Yes it is. The weather today will be cloudy with a high of thirty eight. What's today's chicken value sandwiches with baked beans? Please stand for the pledge. Um, the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> 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 I have to speak up a little while. <laughs> Today we are giving a shout out to Miss Curtin for buying us a dash and dot robot. Aww. And Dottie no. for helping <laughs> everyone with a I have nothing to do with the message that gets delivered. And there's Dusty for taking good care of us. Aww. Wow. Thanks and have a terrific Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I'll give a shout out to our speech That'd language be... pathologist who organizes this every morning. And it, it doesn't seem like it would be a lot of work, but it actually it's is a lot of work to get it, um, to get the kids to know what their role is and um, she is always thoughtful about helping the kids to show gratitude for things so mm. that's that was more about how do the kids do they get picked or do they volunteer or um who's good selected they all they all get turns but it's like the old the kids in the upper wing sort of run the show and mm -hmm. then they have the, the little guys come and um, do a pledge and then sometimes they'll they'll ask them little interview questions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. I'll look into that yeah, line like a little bit more. That I, could I be a line that potentially yeah. saves us a little bit more in the end. We yeah, maybe appreciate that I mean, yeah. down a little bit. It didn't have anything to do with like moving costs, did it? When you that was a separate thing. Yeah. It may be because wait, it was in Whaley. There was something that we had to it do. Yeah. Yeah. No, we don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah. Oh, it's owned by somebody it. else now. It, 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 truthfully, we can, uh, you know, we can start guessing up the storm but because that building was maybe there was a maintenance cost to that building mm -hmm. as a town building odds and ends my sense was that patty always was very conservative in her maintenance numbers i know there's also the roof that was a big is a big thing that she tried to build in there the right. maintenance of the roof we also year. had many times maintenance would go over and patty would pull the money from somewhere else and mm -hmm. she could have just kept that line there pulled it from there year after year right. to as a way to as a way and just kind of never things. brought it all the way over um yeah and so there's always I mean, little histories yeah, but just do have they tell their own story it's kind of that's weird. true <laughs> <coughs> okay, okay. um where are we 4400 so that's a line that we've already talked about that we just reallocated from 1450 above so that's not actually an increase to the budget there uh, 5150, we do not have any retirements that will be paid out that we know of right now for Wheatley. Do you know of anything you're looking at? Um, they, retirements, yes, but not. They, they, may, they would make the date right. for letting us know, so okay. it would have to go into next week. Anybody, if anybody announced from here at the end of the year, it goes into the next fiscal right. year. So. so is there z zero in that right yes. now? Yes. Okay. Uh, 5260 non employee insurance. I reduced that line based on the prior fiscal years, and then uh, no other changes for out of district placements. So, our total change right now, dollar wise, is $51,615 or 2.89%. Um, I wanted to note a couple of other things that were requested that are not on here and, and just let you know about them. So we have uh, in a request for 
STEM supplies in the science department and Chrissy and Kim and I spoke about those and given it's a one-time purchase to start up potentially test out mm -hmm. um, a new STEM program that will be funded from another source likely school choice uh, depending on the school choice numbers mm -hmm. and then the nursing equipment uh, there were a couple new beds that were needed mm -hmm. and some type of scope um, likely you can do the same and purchase those out of school choice mm -hmm. funds or there may be money left at the end of this year actually to purchase the nursing supplies yeah. um, so those were the only other major requests that came through uh, the budget was pretty typical uh, from last year and no salary major salary changes or staffing changes or anything so so can we just go back to the separation costs for one second yeah. because I would just want to highlight like this is a very difficult line to budget yeah. for the group and um, I was just looking at the history here which is so helpful to have and it shows on page second to last page of the date plan. yeah it's function code 5150 that um, it's gone up so next year you're making it zero so it was 23,000 one year then it was 42,000 then it was three and a half thousand then it was 8,000 now it's zero so that's really has a big impact on our budget especially when it goes to the 42,000 right. so um, I just want to highlight that because that's a big discussion in the contracts I think right now and so, so it is I mean we're looking to remove the the, the big bite of that for new hired employees mm -hmm. within the contract and when you start looking at FY18 where there's a 42,000 that was probably a couple because I don't remember that there's never one that was that large um, yeah. we may have to look at that as a as a, as a thing and put that warrant. as a warrant or a separate so funding a, process right, right. Yeah. would be a way to also change the way that we have to budget for those right I mean the question is do we bank does the school bank save the money bank the money save mm -hmm. the money or does the town save the money bank the money mm -hmm. you know what I mean and that that's a and that's, it is a good question and because other towns do it some other towns are doing it they're going straight to warrants on that so that their budgets are low mm -hmm. or lower, lower um, right. and you don't get these bumps where all of a sudden you have to increase the budget you know that well now we've taken it out of the budget so if we do have someone in the future then we're gonna have to increase automatically next year or we, or we do a warrant I mean warrants I think is the way to go when you have especially some of these buyouts, we have one that's in another town for around $23,000 this year for one person mm -hmm. for a buyout, mm -hmm. and it's... 32000 Oh, third, excuse me, $32,889, yeah. and... <laughs> it's, that's about right. right. Yeah. <laughs> for one person, so yeah. that, that town, whoever it is, will be probably putting it on, a, I would say, a warrant, unless they budgeted the $32,889. Right. Right. It's just, it's just very hard to budget up and down, up and down, so. Right, and so that becomes, a, right, that becomes the, so that's how you move that money right. around, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, um, and then we're also waiting for the school choice numbers to come out, and if the school choice numbers are very healthy, we might also be able to adjust, where we talk about partially putting that IA mm -hmm. over a couple of years off of, and that will lower that number a little bit too. And mm -hmm. so, I think, so I think it's where it's important is that, I'm kind of talking to the camera. Yes, the point. You <laughs> that's know, why I'm bringing you. Last year, the town, I don't want to use the word bailed out, but gave us more last year because we needed more. Mm -hmm. And we were able to move stuff off of school choice to help create a school choice reserve. And I think, um, and when I talk about school choice reserve, it's because you have fluctuations in that account. Yeah. Same thing as this. If you have a certain amount of kids who don't come, all of a sudden your budget changes. Um, we might be in a healthier spot to have such, have a very low budget moving forward, increase moving forward mm -hmm. this year. I think I'm this just, year, it, it is, it's because but the no, town, we're okay but it's, for right, years. right, but it's because the town gave us that, gave us last, money, year. that last money, or funded us last yeah. year. We can also ask the, when we go on the 24th of February, we can always ask them, what do you want us to do? Do you want us to put big numbers as a retirement thing into the thing or would you rather have it paid yeah, out Yeah, I think it's warrant? a good topic for we can always, we can always, we can always ask them. Definitely, the finance community. Yeah. I, I would say they probably would want to have it on a warrant, but I don't know. but everybody will it, know it, it that. It can go either way because yeah, if it's a bad, the problem is if it's a bad warrant. As long as we're on warrant, the same Right, as long as if it's a bad warrant year, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there's some yeah, there's, there's a lot of other needs. There's some other needs. Right. The then, warrant that doesn't get approved. Right, then if they don't approve the warrant, then we got to take out the budget. Well, then we have and that's, but that's yeah, usually to towns aren't good. Usually yeah. towns yeah. not understand. Waitley. I mean, Waitley's were pretty. They've been yeah. generous over yes. the years the to help the schools. Is. They really have. Yeah. 
Um, the, only, the other question is, is there any liability? Like, can we project what we, owe, what we might owe? I know we don't know when people are going to retire, but there's like actuarial ways of sort of projecting when they might retire, and then we can kind of have at least a sense of how much is out there? Yes and no. We try to do that in a, in, within um, negotiations. We have mm -hmm. a, al uh, okay, a an algorithm. We have a spreadsheet yeah. with projections of where who's going to retire and what time. And the only way we can do it is that if they reach the age and here's a service, but anybody it changes. You know their percentages change. So. So yeah. it's a guess. It's a guess. It's, a guess. it's totally and a guess. So, but at least in, in, in a small a school like time. this, we could guess yeah. the next couple of years out. Um, you know, and um, it just might be good for us to have some sense to the extent we, we can guess. Typically, no. Like right now, if there is someone who's retiring this year or next year mm -hmm. that hasn't hit this, we at least know a year in advance that if they miss the timing. We know yeah, in 22 mm -hmm. that we're going to have to right. build that money back. Well, we know again. there is going to be, there most, there's very likely going to be a retirement next year. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So but that's that's sort of my that point. Is change, like then, that's not that much time to adjust. Right. Yeah, we put Depending what the number comes out next this year for next year, or does it have to be spent? Well, I, if it's a teacher, it likely a little bit isn't going to help. You know, right. if it's a, someone who's it's going to be more like the twenty, yeah, it's going to be like twenty thousand dollars. So probably not that much. And they know, and the teachers know, you know, through the union that they have to know by we have they have to tell us by yeah, September. I mean, that's the good. They have to tell by September, September first if they're going to retire the following year. Correct. Yeah, I think it's October. It's in October. October. Okay. Okay. Somewhere around there. Yeah. The other thing is that it's all dependent upon are you, are you how much sick time they have. So if they exactly. use <laughs> more sick time, then their payout is not as high. Which we'd love to have to do, but okay. Well, I just wanted to highlight some of the challenges yeah. with that because that is an important piece of our budget. I, I like the, this is fine because I have my reading glasses to look at this page here. So yeah, this is awesome. I mean, this could shrink too if you took out the negatives. But yeah, I, mean, you I think know, what we'll do is slim that down for next time and one page or you know try to rem at least hide the lines that we're not going to talk about and really make it bigger for yeah. the ones that right i mean there's not a, and we, there's I mean, no change yeah we, just take them out. we talked about it. we wanted full transparency on the first time through but yeah if you're talking about 148 dollars <laughs> you mean do, do you have to throw that you know i mean you can lump Maybe. that you can lump that into sections is this ready to go to the town i mean give it to brian and the select board yeah, and so we don't want to go we can't go to the town until we get the numbers from the state which is so which is the the last week of last week of january okay okay so uh, the way we have it kind of scheduled is we will see this budget again with the new numbers at the February meeting and then two weeks later we'll bring it to the so w at the end of that meeting we will probably vote the budget the yeah. uh, tentative budget moving forward or and then um, but we're going to give them enough of time before we meet on the 24th we're going to so we meet on the calendar uh, we meet on Who's meeting the we meet on the 11th. Yeah. Okay. Finance committee in February. Do you have a meeting on the 11th? I mean, I've sent that out yet. Okay. Um, I got it from you. I think so. You sent me an email. So on the on the 11th, we have a school committee meeting. At the meeting, we will vote a tentative budget to send forward to the to the town. Okay. We will go on the 25th, which is two weeks later. So we'll be able to give that to them. They will review it in advance. I'm saying this out loud for everybody, right. for the public. Um, we will then go to, to the finance committee, present our budget. They will say yay or nay, um, or give us our thoughts. Um, and then we will vote that budget. I think it's, and then we'll vote that budget at the March meeting. The March meeting. Which I don't have loaded in my calendar. I can't find it. Or maybe it's the second or the third, rather? Yeah, it's the third. So it's literally the following week, and we then we'll be able to vote it. Um, given the way this budget's kind of coming together, and given the uh, what we're projecting for state numbers and stuff, it's, it's not a volatile budget. It's not one that's I, I don't see us coming down, coming having to make huge changes. We're not coming in at a huge percentage that's going to be, you know, the town's going to say if there is any adjustments or any recommendations that they're going to give us, it's not going to be crazy. I mean, it's already a pretty reasonable number. Where it is now, we still may be able to lower it a little bit more. Um, so, and that, this is not this, this budget's in a good shape. We're in a stable kind of area. We did well. That the light <coughs> item for for the blue school that's still going to be at ten thousand dollars. 
if we find out that they were paying other things out of that line item and it's already been put somewhere else, maybe we need to put that 10000 into the other line item or reduce the budget, especially if we're the only one that has that line item to pay for anything at the blue school or something. So right. 10000 is a lot of money that we either we shift it to another line item to take care of those things or we just take it out and, and you know, that could be instead of 2.89, it could be two and a half. Yeah, so the actuals know. from last year, something was paid from it because it's like 7,500 that was paid from it last year. So okay. we don't want to eliminate it in, in its entirety. And I will see, I'll go back and look specifically what's been paid there. And if we can drop it down yeah. another couple thousand, everything helps. So great, it, everything helps. But the other thing I just want to be careful of is that we made a lot of adjustments of non-salaried items and lowered them. Okay, so you got your salary lines and you got your stuff. And we made some reduction here. If you go through and do some quick math on this, this budget is all salary. Yeah, yeah. It's all salary, not just the teachers, not just the IAs, but you know ourselves included, you know, in that kind of thing. And you have a reduction from central office that, on top of that, has made it that that increase is, is almost all salary. So, you know, it's now you know if you cut the things kind of thing, and then you have a bad salary year, you can't. There, you know, what I mean. So there are other ways that we can, if we want to get this down to 2.5, there's other ways of getting it there too. I'm just, I'm just, right. I'm just saying, because you, you kind of leave. I'd like to find out what we, because if you don't spend it, because the idea is if you don't spend that money, okay, let's say there's, you know, $7,000 left, that then comes back into the school choice that we then can apply to offset the kind of things, or we can give it back to the term. And if enrollment <laughs> next year looks better than it does this year, then that percentage is for central office shared expenses is going to have to go back up. So. You just have to be careful. Mm -hmm. okay. Reducing things too much. Right. So that part of it is based on this year's numbers. Right. And it's numbers as of October 1st. So, you know, if there's any changes throughout the year, those aren't taken into consideration. I do like the way you did it. So. Yeah, that's very helpful. The other, can we just quickly touch on the other sources? Yeah. The sure. school choice. So yeah. um, it looks. I'm wondering if that's increasing or if that's the same. Uh, let me look. Also. And I don't know what IDEA is. Uh, that is a special ed grant that's funded by the state. It might be federal, actually. Um, and we don't obviously have the revenue sources on any of these, but anything that is special ed related, Karen feels pretty confident in, excuse me, I have to sneeze. Two. 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 Excuse me. Um, she feels confident that we can continue to support anything that was funded similar to last year. Looks like the increase is just in the general fund if, if the far right percentages for everything. Uh, the, the last two columns are just related to the general fund. Oh, okay. Um, so it looks like the budget that was approved last year for school choice went in with expenditures at 294,000. Mm -hmm. So this would actually be a little bit less. Okay. Uh, the 294 has, I think, changed for FY20, mm -hmm. what we're actually gonna spend, but that's what was thought to be spent last year. Um, the IDEA grant is almost exactly the same as is early childhood revolving funding. Um, on the last page. I'm looking at the last page. You're looking, you're looking for, yeah, that's fine. It's Sorry, so, on the last page. No, the last page. Yeah, the so those sources, those other funding sources are pretty level. Mm -hmm. And early childhood, how are they doing? Are they Man managing yeah they're in decent shape uh -huh. um, I did meet with Amy they carry a, a small surplus year to year so that if there mm -hmm. are any unforeseen expenditures or uh, changes in enrollment they have some funds to cover that but for the most part the early childhood program pays for itself great that's awesome I mean, that's a big thing that we were hoping would happen yeah. okay so we're actually reducing our dependency on this full choice it looks like Potentially. For the time being, yeah, which is great. So yes. the, the looking at the cherry sheets, the second round of cherry sheets they used, and basically looking, projecting ahead, you know, we're, we're hoping to see that 
that school numbers choice numbers should be going up mm -hmm. based on what our numbers are, but mm -hmm. you, you know, until know. we get right. until we get because and they were also pretty conservative in their it was so tight that the, looking at we were looking at the last year's numbers and this year's numbers because there was a big shift because when I saw the when um, Shelly gave it to me, I said, those numbers were a lot lower. And she said, this is what they had, and this is what exactly came in. So we'll go through all that when we get the exact numbers. Because okay. I don't want to get the wrong numbers out there, then have to do a correction meeting. Yeah, um, no. So when we get those at the end of the month. And so I think the next meeting will be, will be this budget, the real school choice numbers, and how they apply there. And that will be, um, again, it, it should be in the positive realm based on the kids that we have. Yeah. Um, how's how's um How's our enrollment with preschool and the revolving fund with preschool? Everything looks fine in regards to early childhood. There is a small portion of salaries that is paid from general fund, um, but most of the funding comes directly from the revenue brought in. Okay. And they do carry... There's not a, like a, a little abundance to pay for. I think we did it a few years ago. We, we took some of that some money salaries. to offset something. I didn't know if there was an abundance that we could use on something else. So right really now there is they we do have them. Early childhood does carry and, and it shows just saying this that they she, they, they do carry a little bit of extra. Yeah. For any other you know um, you may have some student tu tuition needs you may have and so they carry some to adjust that. If that number gets too large, then we kind of sneak in and take a little bit. Of right. well, we can other only courses. use it for early childhood right. expenses. Right. We can't use it to fund other kinds of right. school. So there is a portion of the teacher salary that does hit the general fund. So mm -hmm. if we needed to, someday we could yes, think about it. Yes, we could. If if the reserve account starts to get too high, we could certainly consider putting all of her salary back on early childhood. The IAs are fully paid from early childhood, um, but you have to be careful because if there's any dramatic changes in enrollment there, mm -hmm. you want to have that surplus kind of built up so that it continue to support that and then you don't want to have to put too much back on general fund at some point so having a little bit of mm -hmm. a buffer is mm -hmm. always good this um if a child needs um, extras uh in preschool extra services right? extra services um and they come from a different town since it's self since it's paid by the the parents of preschool kids, right? The kids are on a sliding scale or whatever. But who takes care of the extra services? The parents, or does it come out of the, out of a town that's because preschool's paid out of the parents' pockets right, for so preschool. Right, so they're not considered school choice if they're not from Wayne. Exactly, paid. but they can come here as a preschooler, right? But if they need extra services, who pays for it? That's, that's a good question. question. I think. I, I don't think the parent pays for it. I think it comes from the sending town or... Well, yeah, but since typically but if a child needs extra services, aren't they not paying? Right. They don't There's, there's a lot of programs that support just something I, preschool children. They're part of REACH or something. If they need extra services, mm -hmm. which would mean that they would actually be attending preschool for free, which I don't know that we they, have they that go to, They do REACH here. until they're three, and then they... Yeah. Or through the school, but who pays? I I don't think it's because it's a it's paid by the parents now for preschool, right. preschool. So if they need extra services, then they come from another town. I mean, it's I'm a, just it's a good question, and I'll get the answer. To that. Okay. I should be able to rattle that off because it's pretty it's straightforward. Because like in kindergarten, it goes right to school choice, and that gets built right. back to town. Towns do have a responsibility to a child with special needs who's in pre who's in pre K. To address those needs, so mm -hmm. the question is, how does the funding follow that? And I don't want to rattle it off and be wrong. I just didn't. But you know. um, technically, the town, the sending town, is technically responsible for that child. But if they enroll here, it's a good question. Right? It's a good question. We'll look yeah, it up. I, it's not the parents. I believe that if you want the, if your child needs services, <clears throat> and you want to send your child to to pre K at no cost because of the, the special needs. You have to do it in, in your, your town. town. Yeah, that's my understanding. We had someone who opted to continue to come here and, and pay so that they could stay here. Okay. Um, but that, that I agree, but the question is if there's extra services. Who pays for it? Who pays for that? That's an interesting question. Does it come out of that little buffer that we had that's left over, which Shouldn't. Well, let's just find out. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. yeah. It's a good question. Start any rumors. 
That's what I, I don't want to answer. No, I'm not. I'm not trying. I, I was just thinking. Okay, I know we take care of kindergarten through twelve, but what is the right? What yeah, is what the is it for preschool? Yeah. They get rid of all the yeah, right, right. So, right. so I, I, one comment, I, I like to see the total increase for the whole budget because it's important, I think, for the town to understand like they're funding a portion of the budget, but the rest of the budget is coming from other sources. And so it's helpful to explain, like, here's how much it, it costs to run ele Whaley Elementary to in total. Um, Okay. So, like you said, the two point eight nine is really just the one eight just one point eight million. Yeah. So I'd just be curious what the. I mean, I can figure out the math, but I'm just saying it's helpful to say you know, you're helping fund this increase, but overall, it's either going up or down. Yeah, and there's not really any change to those other funding sources, so, so it's, it's probably going it's down. It's really just yeah. What based on the Which school choice numbers right now, yeah. um, it's going down a little yeah. bit. So. But we have good stories to tell with all of those, so that's great. Thank you. So the next step is to um, wait for school choice, see what happens with that. So we will bring the cherry sheets to the next <coughs> meeting, mm -hmm. and that will kind of firm up our numbers, mm -hmm. and we'll do a tentative, then at the next meeting we'll do a tentative vote, we'll make any adjustments mm -hmm. based on those numbers. Um, and then um, the tentative budget to send to the finance committee, and then we'll be with the finance committee to explain. I have a question. Um, I think at one of our past meetings, we talked about maybe putting something on the website or our website or the district website about promoting school choice. Did we ever do that? I didn't see anything. I don't know. Okay, but that was that could have been before your time too. I don't remember. Mary's telling me now. Because when you, when you Google school choice, someone was saying a lot, some schools come up, but I don't think there's anything about ours, you know, to promote. I know there was information in the past that was on the website, but I think that's a great idea. I, I just took a quick look and I make it very front and center that we're an option. Yeah. That's important. Yeah, that's uh, Instead of word of mouth. Yeah, because people will do a yeah. Google s search, and if it, our school doesn't come up, they might not even consider it. Right. Great, thank you, Shelley. You're welcome. So next is the memorandum of the coming. This other one. Is it good or bad? No, it's fine. <laughs> you know what? I only make one favorite. Well, we can share. And I have the official. I have, no, I have one. I have the official copy, but I didn't have one for Christmas. No, that's okay. All right. All right, so I met with, this is regarding the IAs, and so there was, you know, we just, just settled their contract, and there was some confusion um, and questions about, um, within the contract, we talked about when they, after they cover for an hour, of a class, they get paid five dollars um, as a substitute. Five dollars extra. Extra. Mm -hmm. That's it. So they get a, a stipend for five dollars after they cover the class. Um, in it hasn't hasn't been happening in this building, right? Where there's been some buildings where they'd be covered forty five minutes in one portion of the day and forty five minutes later in the day, and technically those are two forty five minute periods, but they did an hour and a half of full substituting. Should that should they get the five dollars? Mm -hmm. Okay and. Um, while the in some buildings the principals have been just doing yeah they, you really went you helped us out today you went beyond it wasn't just and you weren't just supervising you took over for the teacher and you were acting as mm -hmm. um, and we didn't have to bring in a sub that day so we saved money that kind of thing um, we want to do consistency across all the schools and just put it in writing and the way we kind of you can see the way it's written is basically this is non-binding to the contract in the sense of that we can renegotiate this at the the next negotiation um, and um, it just kind of really s spells out that it has to be the pr they can't go collecting hours of covering these are coverages that have been assigned by the principal or the principal's designee and the other issue has been that IAs have been covering um, in, the, in this building or other buildings and Chris can talk about the extent of this building if the specials teachers out 
-hmm. So an IA, so if you're an IA and you say, hey, I need you to cover gym class. And so the IA who may have been in that gym class prior with the gym teachers, now in the gym class alone, delivering the full phys ed instruction, their role has changed mm -hmm. in the sense of that they, you know, that it, but it's less than an hour, specials are less than an hour. So they aren't getting any additional thing. And I, when we met, I was kind of, I was, I kind of pushed and said, you know, that's really them taking on a different role. They're taking over instruction. They actually are and saving they them. don't, they don't have the benefit of an IA, which the, the right. The, There's, the they're maybe missing have, the second right? person, and you know, they're fulfilling the role of a teacher for that whole period. And so the same thing could happen in music, or things could happen in, um, in a technology special, those kind of things. So. They should be instead. They didn't go to the full where the, the the contract we just signed said they have to be there for a full hour. But they really had filled that that full period in that. It's again, it's five dollars. It's not a lot of money, but it does show our appreciation. But it's five dollars per hour if they do it more than one hour. If they were do it for, let's say they were the visit teacher for the entire day, it would be thirty-five dollars. Okay. And again, which is cheaper than bringing in a sub for the full right. day. On top of their regular. On top of their yeah. regular play. Yeah. Yep. Okay. But again, um, so it, again, it, it recognizes. Um, the value. The value that they're bringing in, and so um, I met with the union officials on that night, and we, I think we came to agreement. So I think it's pretty straightforward. But okay. um, any, so this is, as you can see, as it's written, um, will be attached to the current contract, but you know, basically sunsets at the end of the contract, mm -hmm. and they'll, they'll be negotiated at the next one if we want to. Both parties agree this was a good idea moving forward. So it was important. So it was one of those things where I, like moving it forward with like. You know, tentatively, we wanted to change it. So it's very small, but um, mm -hmm. um, so I have the official one for you to okay. sign. Um, but we need to vote. You need to vote, and then you can sign. I make a motion to accept the memorandum agreement. I second. All in favor? So I guess you all sign. Thank you. Thank you. It's a, it's a optional. There has been, um, Bob just asked me, do we need to go to the executive exactly. session? There has been, we haven't had any meetings since the last, our last yeah. school committee meeting, and our next meeting is set for the 22nd for negotiations, so there hasn't been any. There's nothing really to update on. I have no news. Okay. Well, why don't we just wait? So we have this too? Everybody signs it. Oh, everybody? Signs it. I don't know. I guess the chair could just sign, but <laughs> doesn't hurt. You know, we don't want Donna. Matt makes you feel really important. <laughs> if you all get the same. Thanks. Thanks. We're all in this with me. <laughs> okay. Um, so then let's just move on to the reports. It sounds like if we don't need to go into executive session. Anyone has particular questions? <clears throat> we'll wait till next month. Hopefully, when's will the next meeting? Come this together, month? January twenty. Twenty second. Hopefully. Where's the meeting? <laughs> hey, people, can we come? Or is it? Um, you can. So we're in mediation. So we're um, not actually at the table together. So you, uh, um, board members can come and observe mm -hmm. their, their, their board side. side but okay. um, there's, there's nothing really to observe. We're in a room. They're in a room. Okay. Bob's there. Um, I'll stay home. <laughs> so, I mean, we're pretty close. I hope to. I hope that gets wrapped up this month. But I've been saying that for several months. Yes. <laughs> I'm optimistic. Hang in there. Exactly. First is me. <laughs> um, capital projects? I think, well, they're putting in the new card system. Is there anything else to report on? Or no leaks or anything? No. Or no, but we not submitted, much snow? We so submitted that's... our capital projects. I sent them in to Brian. And, okay. um, um, the lowest snow in the capital committee. Did you guys there. look into the roof? Someone had said something about the snow from the gym coming down. And Oh yeah, there was somebody the last meeting. No, I haven't. I haven't done a. I didn't do that. <coughs> I just saw that in my notes. The weight of the snow. Luckily, we haven't had much snow. The other thing, we have had to call um, the septic guy a number of times. Um, the alarm one, going off. The alarm was going off once, but then we also have this um, intermittent, really awful smell, and it's been mostly like outside the, the building. Um, but on um, was it Friday? Yes. It it was in the building and it was it was awful and so we didn't know if it's related to septic or, or not. So was it cabbage? Because yeah. there was a farm over there last week that had a really um, one of those was, was it cabbage? What it smelled like? Because um, dead somebody rotting. who lives over there said that there was some farm that had a bunch of rotting something with the cabbage. Hmm. Um, 
I can. That's before you go over 91 Bridge on the right. That's all cabbage over. Well, most of that field is cabbage. Mm. <laughs> and that would do that? <laughs> like in the winter, that would. It's exposed. Yeah. It's rotting. It warmed up over the holidays. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was awful. Okay, well, keep an eye on it, certainly. Yeah. And if you think it's the only other thing it brings to mind is when there was that gas smell in the building that there was issues with the gas company. Yeah. I don't well, know we, if it's that's a that was smell. that would no, they, they deemed that to be the sewage gas. Yeah, John John Hannum suggested I use some of my Yankee Kindle donation to buy myself a gas detector yeah. so that I don't keep making okay. false alarm calls. To uh, okay. But, but it's, you have to do it safe. Well, but yeah, so, yeah, yeah. 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 And and I the problem is when you catch a whiff of it and. Yeah, you, don't you know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's not a always, septic. it doesn't always smell septic, it smells gassy. Yeah, right? so yeah. It's, that, it's and that's methane. it, and it was like, it was at maybe two days before um, winter break last year, yeah. and it was mm -hmm. at a terrible time because it was arrival time, mm -hmm. but it, it definitely, it smelled like a natural gas leak. And mm -hmm. I think it, it's the way the building is also orchestrated with that, it kind of captures it. Like yeah, but prior to your time, there was some... Oh, then there was the other time where, so that was being reported to me from outside. Like lots of people had come in in the morning yeah. and said that they smelled it yeah. right outside. Yeah, yeah. That the previous time, I smelled it in the building. Right. And the fire department came and they right. it was nothing detectable. Okay. I'm just remembering, and I'm kind of looking at Mary, like weren't the gas people here like a few years ago, like before Chrissy's time? Yeah, and then no one told me that. So I'm like, it would have been nice to know that because I felt like I was... The little girl. Yeah. So I'm not trying to wolf. say this is that. I'm just saying. Well, that's why we pay you the big bucks to make decisions on the spot. <laughs> well, one of the things that the um, the man who deals with the septic had mentioned having a I don't even know what it's called, but the some sort a of vent. a pipe, a vent pipe that is higher, <laughs> so that it's not coming it's not in. So if right we continue to have this problem, that maybe. Yeah. That's well, well if it's outside the building, that's one thing. This was more inside. Extending the vent pipe is not a big deal. I don't want to smell it. So no. Get <laughs> 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 more candles. <laughs> well, last night after the PTO meeting, when we went outside, you could smell Yankee candles. Oh, this, is much, well, this, this, is, this is much better. Yeah. So we may need to tell That's them That's blowing out of South Southwest today, so we would get that smell. It's going to amp up production yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Nice <laughs> okay, um, I have no update. Collaborative? Is there anything? No, we have not. No report? Okay. Uh, principal. Uh, At long last, we have uh, a new fifth grade instructional assistant. Um, mm -hmm. And she started yesterday. And she came back today. So <laughs> that's, a, that's a good start. Um, her name is Kaylin Haley, and she has an associate's degree from HCC and is currently um, attending uh, UMass through the University Without Walls to, to pursue a, a degree in education. Um, she's coming to us from preschool, so I'm thinking she has a whole lot of patience. <laughs> And it would be very nice to have that. We've, we've done pretty well in trying to fill that gap, but it would be nice to have someone who's in that role permanently. Um, the donation, which we already talked about. Our winter concert, I don't know. Maureen, were you here? Mm -hmm. Wasn't that awesome? It was the best one I've ever been to. That's, oh, that's yeah, what I thought. Um, <clears throat> there were so many people here, which I was happy to see. And it's because it's not easy to, for everyone to come out in the middle of the day. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that people took time off of work or. Uh, I liked the movement and with the music. Yeah, so obviously our, our band teacher, Mrs. Carr, and um, our strings long term sub, Miss um, Miranda, they did a great job. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of those kids have not had an instru instrument in their hands for more than a a couple of lessons because it's still early <laughs> days in terms of that so sound can be interesting and they, they do such a great job and the buckets too that was right really so then cool. that was the the general music teacher has done some really cool things with the with the classes yeah. and it was so fun fifth and sixth grade both had a different kind of performance 
with buckets that like the big paint buckets she had um, oh, gone, to, uh, she had gone to Lowe's and they donated uh, thank you Lowe's um, <laughs> they had donated those buckets mm. and the first time someone came down to the office to get me they're like you've got to come down and see this so I went in and the sixth graders were all sitting in the line and they had they had this routine going it was like synchronized yeah you know, drumming oh drumming uh, but have you seen like Slamming it down and oh. passing it along. It was, yeah. like it was a little more yeah. than drumming. Yeah, it was. This. You should film it. I, Put I it did. on the public radio. I did. Or public <laughs> TV. Um, <laughs> and you know, lots of little things. You know, she had. I think the first graders all had white gloves on, like winter gloves, and they were doing uh, sort of music and movement at the same mm -hmm. time. It was. Uh, every class had something that was distinct, distinctly cool. different. And, and again, she's new, and. It's early days for her, so to, to pull all that off with, with a bunch of kids she's still just getting to know was, was pretty awesome. Um, and I appreciate the parents' point of view that it was the best show that you'd ever seen. I'll pass that along to I've heard that her from music teachers. Um, and the fourth grade food drive, we had another successful food drive, and Chief Savini came and the kids filled up the, filled up the cruiser. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just... You know, the, the more service learning we can get the kids involved in, the better. I, I think it's, in this day and age, it has to be a big part of what goes on in the school is um, being aware of the needs of others in our community and in the larger community and doing what you can to help out. So um, it's nice to, you know, collect that food, but the, the bigger goal is some awareness of the world. That's great. And that's it. Okay. Superintendent? No Mr. Report. Superintendent, no report? No report. Okay. The year's off to a good start. Year's off to a good start. Budget, budget, okay. budget. Yes, budget, budget season. Uh, so, uh, entertain a motion to end the meeting. Make a motion to adjourn. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody.